near his home. The consequences of the unsecured tow hitch were fatal. Shortly after I became an MP, I met with Freddie's parents in 2016, and since then I have campaigned to improve towing safety standards, and I'm grateful tonight to have the chance to focus the mind of the current minister on this important topic, and I thank him for talking with me. Because sadly, not enough has been done in the last three years to ensure that our roads are safe for trailers. Back in 2016, when I first met the family, they had researched previous cases and learnt that there were other families like theirs. This was not a one-off and could potentially have been prevented with better safety checks in place. One example that came to light was the death of a four-year-old boy killed by a trailer that had broken free from a car in the constituency of Amber Valley in 2007. The then minister, the former member for Poplar and Limehouse, commented at that time, Introducing MOT-style tests for such trailers is a possibility that we have considered before and it is a matter that we keep under review. There have been several such accidents in recent months and I will certainly consider the matter with officials in the department to see whether we need to improve on that. The Road Traffic Act states that it's an offence to drive an unworthy vehicle and we know that there are many trailers on our roads that are dangerous and in need of repair. We need to do so much more to stop further tragedies happening. Since 2015, I've met with many road safety ministers and I would like to thank and put on record my thanks to the Right Honourable Members for Harrogate and Knaresborough, Hereford and South Herefordshire and Northampton North for their time and support in looking at this issue and working with me and the family. And I thank the current minister's predecessors, the Baroness Beer of Norberton and the Right Honourable Member for North, North West Durham, who have reported to the all-party parliamentary group on towing and trailer safety, which I chair. There have been many successes of the campaign in the last those years. I held two trailer safety summits in Bedminster where the accident happened in March 2017 and 2018, April 2018, involving Freddie's family and key stakeholders. In July 2017, the National Trailer and Towing Association introduced the Free Safety Checks Initiative, the first of its kind in the UK. This meant that through its network of accredited members, any light trailer could be given a free 10 to 15 minute visual inspection of key points and a written report completed. The campaign also worked with the Department of Transport and DVSA on a campaign on driver behaviour and the creation of the hashtag TowSafeForFreddy. This brings together vital information about towing safely and has hugely increased awareness of the issue amongst drivers. Following my amendments to the Haulage Permits and Trailer Registration Bill in 2018, the Government had to undertake a statutory report into trailer safety. This was published in July 2019. It was a huge milestone in the campaign. The findings of this Government report reinforced the urgency of the issue. As part of the actions of the report, the DVSA conducted roadside checks of light trailers between 2019 and 2021, and I was able to join such a, such a roadside check near Bristol. This is how we know from this report the horrifying fact that half of all light trailers are non-compliant with safety standards. I was deeply shocked and concerned to learn that 40% of those vehicles were so dangerous that they needed immediate repairs. When people think of towing, they often think of caravans, but we know from the data that caravans and responsible commercial companies are not the issue. It is personal light trailers which contribute to these shocking statistics. Now, this government knows that a disgraceful number of the vehicles on our roads are deeply unsafe. It's their own statutory report which tells them this. So why has the government failed to act on this information or to progress the work from that report that they said they would do? The member for Northampton North, who was the then Minister of State at the Department of Transport, said, following the statutory report in 2019, that a focus must be maintained on driving up the safety of these trailers. This is absolutely imperative. And my ask of the current Minister is that trailer safety be put at the forefront of the agenda once more. Because trailer safety is a key part of safety on our roads. The potential deadly consequences of unsecured trailers demonstrate the need for mandatory safety checks on trailers and formal testing for those using them. The statutory report made the case for this very clearly. It recommended considering revisions and improvements to the test drivers used to undertake in order to hold a licence to tow light vehicles, the so-called B plus E test. And with one in two of the light vehicles on our roads unroadworthy, that knowledge and training is paramount. 
As the former minister stated in 2019 in his response to the report, there is further work in this area which the government will take forward. This was set out in a work programme from the statutory report actions that I and the APPG, working closely with industry and closely with officials in the department and ministers, were happy to see progress. And I thank all those officials in the department for the work that they did. Yet following the 2019 election, we have had a complete U-turn. I was appalled and horrified when in 2021 the government introduced a statutory instrument which scrapped, which scrapped the towing test altogether, meaning that any driver with a standard B driving licence could tow without further instruction on how to do so safely. This was a reckless decision with potentially dangerous consequences. From Department of Tra Transport data, we know that 30% of people who have been trained and tested fail. And yet we are now unleashing thousands of untrained, unsafe and unqualified drivers of trailers onto our roads. Will my honourable friend give way? I, will. I thank my honourable friend for giving way and I congratulate her on her dogged pursuit of this issue. I wonder whether, knowing the appalling state of many of our roads in this country... Or, or, order. I'm afraid we have to go through the technical nicety of the whip moving the adjournment again. I beg to move that this House do now adjourn. The question is that this House do now adjourn. Please resume your intervention. Thank you, Mr Deputy wrong, wrong. Speaker. That took me by surprise. Um, I wondered whether the state of our roads, which many people uh, are uh, aware of, whether that adds to some of the danger uh, posed by the issues with trailers and uh, driver awareness that she set out. I'm grateful to my friend for, for that point, and she makes an excellent point because yes, if the if the if the trailer is not towed safely, any damage or or, or, or you know, road bumps and so on and potholes etc. will add to the stress on on those trailers and and have potentially more lethal consequences. In the government's own impact report, which was not released until after the statutory instrument had passed, stated that this legislation could. And I quote, have implications for the competence of drivers to tow trailers safely and may potentially increase the road safety risk. This was deeply worrying not only for those who've lost loved ones through unsafe towing, but to the wider industry, many of whom contacted me to share their anxieties. The public at large have no idea that so many defective vehicles are on our roads. And now the government has scrapped the mandatory training which would have helped these drivers understand the importance of safety checks on their vehicles. We have the evidence that trailer safety is a serious problem. And yet, despite this, the legislation was deemed fit for purpose. And the only consolation was that it would be reviewed after three years, which will be at the end of this year. Two and a half years into this outrageous piece of legislation, I hope that the Minister has a good understanding now of its impact on road safety, and I would welcome an update from the Minister on this. With 50% of light trailers defective between 2019 and 2021, can the Minister confirm whether this statistic has changed? What recent data does he hold on defective vehicles? The Minister needs to explain what data will be used to assess the impact of the instrument as part of the review and how this data is now being collected. The impact report stated that the overall accident rate would have to rise by an average of 14% per year to negate all the benefits of the legislation. A 14% increase in accidents. I wonder if the Minister thinks that's acceptable. How many people could lose their lives or be seriously injured because of this legislation? Surely we should be trying to make our roads safer with drivers supported and informed to take all the safety measures they need. There are some who point out to the, to, to, to point to the voluntary accreditation scheme for drivers wishing to tow, and yes, there is information available to those proactive, responsible drivers who seek it, but the clue is in the name, it's voluntary. The numbers of drivers undergoing training has fallen through the floor. The Department of Transport's data show that from over 29,000 people in one year taking the mandatory B plus E test, we now have fewer than 500 taking the voluntary scheme in the last 18 months since it was introduced. That's a drop of 98%. 98%, it's astonishing. The very real consequences of this are more unsafe trailers on our roads. So what measures has the Minister taken to improve the number of people accessing the voluntary training? What is the Minister doing to ensure that those who use our roads are trained to tow and understand the dangers of unsafe towing? We need a coherent plan for our roads which recognises the importance of trailer safety. 
So I recommend the Minister's thoughts on how we can re-embed the finding and actions of the 2019 statutory report on trailer safety into the current road strategy. I've very much enjoyed working collaboratively with Ministers to improve trailer safety. Over the past five years, the All-Party Parliamentary Group on towing, Trailer and Towing Safety has worked steadfastly with the Department of Transport to gather data and information. I hope that we can take this moment to refresh that relationship and to work together to ensure the safety of all those who use our roads. Gathering more and better information on the safety of trailers and the skills of those towing them is crucial. It's through the data that we uncovered the scale of this problem in the first place, and it will be through gathering new data that we can pave the way for improvements in the future. So does the Minister agree with me that this is of the utmost importance, and if so, when and how is he planning to collect that new data? Mr Deputy Speaker, as I wrap up and as Chair of the All Party Group on Towing and Trailer Safety, I'd like to thank all of my colleagues who have supported and publicised this issue in this place over the last six years. I must thank those stakeholders in the towing industry who have been doing all they can to improve trailer safety, in particular the contributions of the National Caravan Council and the work of Alicia Dunn at the Council have been hugely valuable. Those working in the industry know how important it is to improve trailer safety and their work in raising awareness and improving driver behaviour and knowledge has been crucial. Finally, I'd like to pay tribute to the incredible bravery of Freddie's family and thank them for all they've done to shine a light on this issue and educate me. If the Minister takes one thing away from tonight's debate, I hope that he will remember that the, the lives that are behind the statistics. There are families across the country impacted by poor and ill-thought-out legis Ill legislation. I must say it was not his legislation that he brought to this House. But improving trailer safety saves lives. And I hope he agrees with me that 